Hey everybody, you know what time it is. It is time to be gay and do crimes. Um, happy Pride Month, everybody! I'm coming back to the birth me code scene. I think I figured out, uh, what I needed to do, um, I think. So, <laughs> it turns out I was actually missing another ending. Um, so basically I need to just kind of like go through, get this final ending, and then uh, I should be able to get the true ending, so we're gonna get some new dialogue today um, and be setting everything up for the conclusion of this story uh, at the end of June, just like I promised. Um, so yeah, this week we're gonna be doing this, and um, next week we should be wrapping up. So, uh, depending on how long that is, I may split it into two play sessions, we'll have to see. Um, and see how my voice feels <laughs> at the end of it. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Let's go ahead. Um, so one of- there's been a couple, like, updates to the game since the, I last played. One of the things is they now have this little thing here where, like, you've done the choice before. And since I have to exhaust all the choices, um, we're gonna go through these. So, since Gula is funnier to talk to, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, talk to, um, Ira first. The lion was trying to ignore Ancora while she followed right behind Superbia and him. She couldn't blame him. No one really wanted to associate with her. Do you want something in particular? Oh, uh, no. I just thought since we're gonna group up, we should, like, talk a little. I'm not very good at talking, if you noticed. That's okay by me. There's some easy topics, too. Hey, what are you two going on about? We're almost there anyway. But barely in the hallway, you mean. Whatever, just focus on getting there faster. The resulting silence wasn't allowed to go on for very long before someone else talked to Ancora. But the girl was lost in thought already. So, how was the puzzle? Ancora didn't realize she was being addressed until Avaricia spoke again. Hey, anyone home? She snapped her fingers which brought Ancora back to reality. Truth be told, she had been deep in thought too, much like Gula. Oh, uh, sorry, I was thinking about... stuff. Uh, the puzzle wasn't too bad, I guess. It only took me a few minutes. This kind of puzzle is nothing for someone like me. Maybe I could have done it even faster. Good to know, then. Well, we have a good chance of making it out of our room after all. Hey, what does that mean? Do you also think I'm loopy? Can't deny that having visions doesn't make you look too sane. The group arrived at a small intersection in the hall. There was a tiny part leading further in towards two doors much like the ones they'd gone through a moment ago, and a longer hallway that gave way to a bend. This is where we split up, I think. There's a door ahead that can be opened for a classroom that almost most likely contains some me cards. Be it, I should head over there. Nobody made you the leader. If anything, that was my idea too. The earlier I'm in there, the earlier I can leave. Deciding not to futilely argue against the rabbit, the horse waved the rest of the group away before trudging off to the door. Superbia followed him without so much as the same courtesy. Faced with that, Ancora. Uh, okay, well we've done both of these, so I'm, uh, let's talk to you, Lydia. Um, alright, so this is stuff we've already done, so I am wondering if, like, um, alright, well, whatever, we'll go through it. It's been a while, everybody, we gotta, we gotta get back into this groove. Uh, and Cora looked over at the group and she noticed, uh, Ira was a little distraught by this. He was holding his arms and looking out of place. It's probably due to Superbia's departure. Before she could talk to him, Nvidia grabbed her shoulder. Hey, you okay? We have to keep moving. Be thankful the others are allowing you to come with them still. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Let's go. Ira's not taking the separation from Superbia too well, huh? What's he even seeing in her anyway? So far, he's been the one to cling to another, per another person the most. The group was left to its own volition following all that. I guess Ula and I will take the next one then. Ula nodded her head in acknowledgement. 
Gee, this room is gonna be fun, I can just tell. The sarcasm in his tone wasn't lost on Ankora. She wished she could say something to lighten the mood, but everything she thought up didn't seem good enough. In the end, she remained silent, just like Gula. The larger group walked further down the hall. About midway, there were two doors leading to two different classrooms. True to his word, Nvidia pulled Gula over to the first of them, leaving the second to Ira and Cora and Avaricia. Can't say I'm a fan of locking myself up in one of those death cages again, but... Oh, stop complaining and go. Besides, you get to be with a cute girl and a mature woman. Yeah, uh, those are the problems, probably the most d dangerous things in there. Avarisha disregarded his peak, his peak, and lazily walked into the classroom after opening the door. Ira followed her after shrugging at the remaining girl, who was also followed after him. I'm glad we managed to reach an outcome without tearing each other's heads off for once. The girl mumbled to herself, taking in the sight of what was in the room. It was not actually a classroom. It was like a lobby of a large manor. The room was tall, and it seemed like it was the second floor above. Alright, so this is basically, um... We've done this before... Um... Okay, so we've done this before. I think I'm just gonna go through this without too much and I'll just like cut it out later or whatever. Um, unless I see something that, you know, I need to. Apparently I found out that there were, they've added achievements for clicking on everything in the deduction rooms, which I might go back and get. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically that's where we are. Um, but okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just do this, I guess, and I'll just cut it out later. I don't know, we'll see. It's, it's, who knows. I don't know, I don't remember this part of the puzzle. I remember, like, doing it all myself on, like, a piece of paper. Um, loyalist is next to enthusiast. Enthusiast is related to reformer. Enthusiast and challenge. Seven or eight. Benefit. Seven or eight. I have to like actually resolve this because I don't remember what the uh, thing is. Uh, hold on. I'll tell the lab real quick. So it's either six or nine. Which I think makes it six. I wonder if I still have my notes on this. I bet I do. Um, I think they're around here somewhere. 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 Let's see if I can find them. I don't remember. I do remember doing this with notes before. I don't remember exactly how it goes. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> I think I had them here. In here somewhere. Maybe not. I do remember... Okay, I do remember... Okay, so I found some of the stuff that I'd done in, like, later... <laughs> in later ones. In this, this, uh, thing, but... Oh, weird. Got it here somewhere, I know that. Uh, good thing I'm gonna be... Oh, jeez, I just, I, I legit... am not remembering. Uh... Uh, I remember the final answer. Um, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Mm 
not letting me skip this, so I guess this is stuff that I haven't seen before. I don't know. It's really hard for me to remember what I've seen and what I haven't. And apparently, they definitely have changed some of the stuff around in the answering process. Um, at least somewhat. I know that the interface is different from the uh, inventory, so... Okay. Uh, without masking her uneasiness at what um, Iroh demanded of her just because he was the one to grab the revolver, Ancora left the room first, immediately noting the door next to theirs was still closed. With the window obstructed by that metal plate, she couldn't see inside to make sure everyone made it out. As the hallways were completely silent other than for her and Avaricia following her, she figured no one else had solved their room yet. Look, I'm not gonna do anything bad, okay? It's just like I said. I don't want any of you to fucking kill me like that. There was some truth to his words. The more Ancora watched him carrying the gun, the more she realized he really didn't know how to use it, which would only be helpful to her. Wouldn't be too hard to try and get it from him. But let's not forget he's also pretty built. He can defend himself even without the gun. For now, Ancora decided not to think about a violent outcome and instead focused her thoughts on what they learned in the room. Someone in the group was a real threat, and it wasn't Ira. It would be best to get the others to follow the same train of thought, but how do we guide them there? So Helper was the answer, huh? Do either of you know what that refers to? Avaricia calmly shrugged, not even deigning to open her mouth to say a single word. However, Ira had a much more irate reaction. Just don't question it, okay? It's not me, but whoever it is, if they learn we know, you can bet that they're going to be meeting that bearded guy in the sky soon after. He pointed upward as he spoke. There isn't any way that they're going to let us go after that. I'm really not smart, but even I can understand it's dangerous, so shut it if you know what's good for you. Which means it's best to bring it up during the next vote. That'll help solve this issue. However, maybe I should make sure I'm right on who it is first, with another session of hacking. Maybe now's not the time, but soon enough. All those thoughts were interrupted when the door next to them unlocked. Nvidia emerged on the scene of Ira brandishing the revolver uh, and looking threatening, which gave him pause. This had the effect to stop Gula dead in her tracks, but not before she bumped into Nvidia, causing him to fall forward to the ground. Ow! Hey, please watch it next time! Oh, my apologies. It was not under my assumption that you'd be ceasing all movements this readily. Now that she was out and she could see it, Gula cautiously watched the gun hanging from the lion's hand. I'm not going to shoot anybody, so stop making a fuss over it. Ugh. Nvidia was still in the process of standing up. No one gave him a hand, so Ancora stepped forward to help him. He shook his head in protest. I'll be fine, it's okay just bumped by not a single body, but the entire gra gravitational force of two celestial bodies. Hey, that is completely uncalled for. Avert your gaze and your uncouth thoughts from my chest this instant. It's hard not to notice them, honestly. Wherever I look, there they are. Or at least a bit of them are, and this, even if I turned all the way around. Luke clutched her hands into fists, looking downright aggravated by his jokes. Thankfully for her, the party got in full swing when the third door unlocked in the distance and Tristi eh, Tristitia's helmet popped from around the corner. Oh, so you're all... He paused then, noticing the gun. Ira roared an annoyed growl at that reaction, which was quickly becoming the norm as each of them joined the gathering. Will you guys stop? It's ju just a gun. I'm not going to shoot anyone. Nobody's going to be scared of this, okay? What do you mean, just a gun? That kind of thing is highly dangerous. Ugh, what's the matter now? Someone's got a gun? Rabbit Girl came in after the horse. She evaluated the situation from Nvidia dusting off his hands, now that he was back on his feet, to the group somewhat awkwardly waiting to see how things would go, and finally to Ira, who still had the gun in his hand. Ugh, simple then. Just take it apart. Without any traces of fear, she walked toward him. He made a movement to aim with the revolver, but she effortlessly pushed his arm away with her own. Look, do you want everyone to stop getting scared over this or not? I thought I heard something about that just now. Just open the gun. I... I don't know how to do that, okay? Then let me do it. 
And Quark could tell that I really didn't want to let go of that gun. But after a moment, he absconded from that position and let the rabbit have it. It's really easy. To empty the gun, there are two ways. One is to open it like this. I remember I called this the first time. And I was like, and the other way is to just shoot all the bullets. <laughs> and she shoots people. She did exactly what she said she would, taking out the six bullets and closing the gun again. Then she slid the bullets one by one into her shoes. Now nobody will be able to shoot with it. The revolver without bullets is useless, unless you want to clock someone with it. Got it? Simple enough, like I said. She handed the now empty revolver over to Ira, who took it back. He put it in his pocket, now that the danger of holding it was past. It was like a weight had been lifted off the group. At least until Tristitia panicked. Oh no, we're running late. The hour's coming to a close soon. We've got ten minutes before the time for a vote is over. <sighs> Let's just vote then. We've got all this time to do it, and on top of that we already found two me cards in our room. We found two me cards too. I guess we all found two? So that's six. <sighs> I don't have a me card. So that means... Ah, d damn it! I could have gone smoothly, but we have to search for more again. I already searched this whole place and didn't find any earlier. Let us away towards a second thorough search. Perhaps we'd not give it, not given it due con prior concern. <laughs> Perhaps we had not given it due pr concern prior. Bitch, please talk normal. I swear you're gonna drop that thesaurus. Apologies once more, but I've no thought to expand toward little salacious Jezebels. <laughs> You're saying I'm a slut, bitch? Look at yourself again and say that once more. That is precisely what you are. A highly uncouth one, completely undeserving of my attention, mind you. With your looks, it's no matter. No wonder your giant mind jumps to that. Just by looking at you, I can tell you've had more dongs in the bell than old church. Nice one, Sperbia. Uh, girls can we what a laugh have we witnessed the singular moment in which your only do let <laughs> to it of cephalic cells is formulated a sentence composed of more than the word bitch i don't give a fuck about what you think about my head composes if you don't stop bitching at me your head is gonna start decomposing instead girls stop fighting we gotta and furthermore you've been a pain ever since you first arrived with your little friend who was voted out you're studying group, you're the last one. I wouldn't tempt fate if I were you, because your group's dropping like flies right now. Uh, the timer's running out soon. Earth calling to bitch face number one and bitch face number two. But they didn't listen. Even though the boys' attempts at bringing the two of them back from their bickering, they simply continued. Right tell then, incapable rabbit, what do you propose to solve our timely dilemma? Should you continue this line, we'd all duly surrender our right to live. This is going to degenerate. Something's got to be done, and fast, or else. Before anyone could do anything, least of all Ancora, Sperbia grabbed the revolver from Myra's pants. Whether or not he'd wanted to stop her, he was too surprised to move. With a kick of her shoe, she grabbed a bullet and slammed it into the chamber, lightning fast. That's how I'll solve the problem. Say hello to your little bitch in hell for me. Glad. The bang that echoed was telltale of what had just transpired. A bullet hole had gone right through Gula's chest, who promptly fell down, hitting her head hard on the wall. Y you're murderer! You're the one going to hell! The helmet she wore activated and the resulting explosion kicked up tons of dust and smoke. By the time it dissipated, the body was headless. Yet the wall behind her barely suffered any damage. And this is the second way to empty a gun. You can thank me later for saving your lives since we won't need a vote for this hour slice. Burbia threw the now empty gun away and walked off before anyone said anything. Everyone was too surprised and frozen in shock to do anything of the sort anyway. And Cora grabbed the gun while no one else moved. While she was doing so, she had a thought for Gula, and her head turned to look at the body, which was now not much more than a mess on the floor. A mess that was getting redder by the moment. What just happened? Uh, sick! I'm gonna be sick! 
He walked away from the others, not content, remaining near the dead body. I should have stepped in. Maybe I could have prevented it. Don't blame yourself over it. I guess... something like that was inevitable. Now what? What about the vote? Well, we've got another hour to think about it. But maybe there's another way. It's like me said. The votes aren't necessary. They are if we want to make it further in. We need a vote. We can't just kill everyone one by one till we hit three left. Unless you're one of, able to disarm the bomb. As much as everyone hated to admit it, all the survivors felt similarly. Gula dying was an unwanted outcome, but it did mean that they wouldn't die for the next hour. And yet, they were still trapped in this section until they voted again. For some of them, it also gave a clear target of who to eliminate next. Not that any of them were close to Gula as to wish for revenge, but Superbia's threat was made manifest. Let's split up and gather our thoughts. The group agreed and everyone set out in a different direction. And Cora left them first, splitting from the rest to check around the corner further south past the room she explored with Avaricia and Ira. Maybe now would be a good idea to hack. Let's see. Matching frequencies are Tristitia, Suburbia, and Ira. Very curious to see what Suburbia is up to, but I got choices, it seems. Now I'll be hacking... <sighs> I don't know. Who do I want to hack here? Hmm. I'm thinking about it. <sighs> I don't remember. I don't remember who I've already done. Uh, maybe you can check my notes. Hold on. Let me, let me look here. Uh, I don't remember. I don't think I wrote it down. Alright, uh, eeny meeny miny mo, catch a tiger by his toe if he hollers, let him go. Eeny meeny miny mo, my mother said, no, make the very best one, and it is why, oh, you, okay. Here it is. And now it's puzzle time. Okay, equalize and then order. Alright, let's see. So we have... Can I cross these across here? I can. Alright, cool. Uh... Okay. Here's the here's the thing that I'm wondering. Is this gonna be no, it's in one. We said it's up together. Let's use each other's equivalent. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. So we have a one and a two. X is what, twenty-two? Z is twenty-six. So twenty-five is Y. Twenty-four is X. Okay, so clearly these are gonna have to be on opposite sides. Uh, what is I? I is nine. Okay, so nine's gonna come over here. Uh, we've got one, two, uh, one, two, nine, one, two, nine. Oh yeah, I'm remembering now that the hints are for like different solutions to the puzzle. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I completely forgot. Um hmm, let's see. Make them even on both. I do wonder too.
Let's see here. Let's see. How much does this all add up to? Uh, let me get my calculator out. It's been a while, calculator. I haven't had to bust you out for an LP in a while. Alright, uh, calculator, let's go. So we have... Oh god, I gotta pull this up more. 1 plus 2 plus... Oops. 9 plus 22 plus 26 plus 1 plus 2 plus 9 plus 6 plus 24. 102 divided by 2. 51. Okay. I need 51 on both sides. Uh, how many do I have over here right now? So this is 1 plus 2 plus 9 plus 22 plus 26. That's 60. So I have 9 too many, so I need to move the 9. Oh, but I gotta put something else over on this side. Hmm. Alright, let's do this for right now. So this right now is 52, right? So we've got 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 22 plus 26, right? That's 52. And then what's over here? Uh, 9 plus 2 plus 9 plus, plus 24. 50. Alright, so this is 52 and this is 50. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So we swap these. Nice. And then we have to put them in order, right? Uh, okay, that should do it. Alright, that is not it. Wait, hold on. You should both equal 51, right? Okay, so this one is 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus... 22 plus 26. Oh, whoops. It's 53. Uh, and then what's this side? 1 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9 plus 24. 49. Okay, so now this one's 3 under. And this one is... Oh, couldn't I just swap these, right? Should do it, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Whoops. Alright, let's see. Evaluating frequencies, connection established. What you up to, Ira? <sighs> I'm back. Sorry about that. Had a small thing to take care of real fast. Seems Ira went off somewhere without Avarishia and he just came back to her. Since he doesn't have the key, he couldn't get into the corner room anyway. I thought I saw a me card, but it was just my imagination. It's not like we really need to find more right now anyway, though, right? Avri Arishia went over to where Ira came from and knelt beside Gula's dead body. I guess not. She has a card and a few keys on her, but we still need to gather a sufficient number of cards for later anyway. More can't hurt. The teacher held them out. Clear as day, there was a me card in the palm of her hand, and in the other, two keys. Her teeth appeared to form the letters I and G, respectively. That's a lot of keys you got now. Four, right? Yes. It's maybe a little too many. Want one? 
Oh, uh, I guess. Don't know what they're for or anything. Just take both. I already have two keys, so I might as well spread them around. Ira took them both, rubbing the back of his head awkwardly at the motion. He clearly wasn't used to saying thanks, or just being polite in general. Two of them remained silent for a few seconds. Both of them were looking at the dead body, as though both of them wanted to talk about it, but also wanted to avoid that. So, uh, about... Yola. You know what we're gonna do next, right? Yeah. So I was thinking... Maybe... Just don't? Don't what? Don't vote for Bia! Look, okay, I know she's kind of mean, but she doesn't think half of the things she says. She's just... that kind of gal. Maybe she shouldn't say them, then, if she truly doesn't mean what she's saying. Listen, no, I... I, I mean, uh... I don't know if I should be mentioning that to anybody, but, like... Her family's kind of fucked up. They're rich, right? They're kind of loopy. They have this whole indoctrination thing. Don't know what to really call it. They talk about God and shit and it's like, just shut up already. She's gotta live with that every day. Dad's a scientist or something. He's into some serious shit. I'm talking drugs and shit like that. I don't mean drugs like crack or weed. Stuff that's apparently supposed to control your flow of thought and connect you to God or some bullshit like that? Look, I don't think that even works, but yeah. Our family's rich and they're doing kinda shady shit, but they don't exactly hide it. It's like they indoctrinated th themselves into doing it. And that makes her a better person. Well, yeah, I just kinda wanna get her out of it. Snap out and realize she's not g God or a prophet or better than anybody. How do you know all of this? Uh, I honestly don't know. Murray came back a bit earlier in that room we explored. There was a mansion lobby with that same as her family's mansion. And a large ornate room. You know? Pristine white and gold and really holy looking. Made me remember I kinda helped with the drugs, I guess. I slipped them to p people at school. Guess that's my crime. I see. Well, I'll keep that in mind. All of that. She gave a nod towards him, but she was clearly looking off to the side. I returned around to see Tristitia coming by. Hey, you two. We're gonna gather to vote. He looked at Avarishi and Ira, but more so the former. It seemed like he wanted to say something, but he refrained. Perhaps because Ira was around. Seen Ancora? Oh, uh, yeah, she's over there around the corner, I think. He pointed to the hall past Gula's body. Prestitia thanked him and walked further in the direction of Ancora's hiding spot. I gotta do this fast, or I'm not gonna be there when he comes around. However, Ancora's helmet no longer displayed anything this time, as if something happened to knock it offline. There were no sounds or any visuals to be heard or seen, respectively, while well, it should have been showing everything from her helmet's point of view once more. Something's wrong. This can only happen if someone forcibly knocks it offline. That means someone bashed the helmet and caused the resonance effect strongly enough. Why did I not feel any of it? Eventually, the helmet rebooted. Ancora's vision became filled with Tristitia, holding her, holding her to help her back to her feet. Okay, I had a moment there. Was it him? Could it be that he closed the distance as quickly and knocked out the helmet in time? It took me to get the connection back? Are you okay? Ancora harbored the strange feeling that perhaps this had been his fault. She acted surprised when he was holding her, only to pull away from him after a few seconds. I'm fine, don't worry over me. Hey, wait up! We have to meet with the group. I'm going there, it's fine. Shrugging the light dizziness she was feeling as a result of the altercation, Ancora put as much distance between them as she could making a beeline for the voting consoles. All right, well, I mean, we already know, I mean, if you've been following this playthrough, you already know that it's the one that knocked her offline was um, NVIDIA, because he came through the the door in the, like, blocked off wall. Um, surely they would all gather to do the vote soon. It was 20 minutes past the hour, so they still had 40 minutes, but there was nothing to do until then except vote. 
I can't shake this feeling that someone did something I wasn't aware of during this part. Something's missing. It feels like running into a wall, head first with your eyes closed. Not good. On the way to the staircase to the voting consoles, Ankora passed by Avaricia and Ira, but she didn't outwardly acknowledge their presence, instead acting like she was in a hurry to go meet with the others at the crossroads. Why are they still in this wing? The only explanation for Avaricia is taking the me card that belonged to Gula. But Ira doesn't have anything to do here. And there was Ira's speech on the room we just explored, too. It gives them a whole new meaning. It means we can't trust Superbia. And Quora hesitated as those thoughts went through her head. There was an even bigger problem at hand, and there was no way to deduce it given the puzzle piece of information she had. The bigger problem is, who knocked me offline? All these details will have to be shared for the vote. It's probably safer to talk about it when they're physically incapable of movement in front of the shotguns. She arrived at the staircase leading up to the crossroads. Nvidia approached her, closing in on her from a, from the entrance to the first hallway. Oh, there you are. Tristan and me were looking everywhere for you. You mean Tristan and I? No, it was me, not you. I mean what I said. Uh, this is just as tiresome as the first time I did it. Hey, hey, who cares if it's correct or not? Are you a teacher or something? Besides, it doesn't really matter. Just forget it. What's important is that we're going to take another vote really soon, so be ready with us. Yeah, I know. I'm heading there. The conversation came to a bit of a standstill. Vidya was clearly hesitating. The exact nature of the reason behind that hesitation was lost on Ankora. Was it because of her loopy episode earlier? If she wanted to get anything out of him, she'd have to take the first step. But what would he answer? Ankora knew what she wanted to talk about. Without much hesitation on her end, she spoke, forthcoming about her incident. Someone assaulted me. I didn't see who it was. Is that so? Assault? Like, punched you? I was struck from behind. I passed out for a few minutes not long ago. It's probably this helmet that caused me to lose consciousness. You know, how B accidentally hit the ear of her helmet on that door flame earlier and she screamed bloody murder? Imagine that, but from a direct hit. I wasn't around back there, so I can't say who attacked you. Do you have any suspects? He was more open to talk about it now. The act out of concern for her calmed Ancora. You came out of the first hallway, so it sounds like it wasn't you. Triss found me and helped me back up, so maybe it was him. I can't rule out that possibility. Otherwise, Ira and Ava were both in Wing A, too. And then there's Bia. Oh, it can't be Bia. She's been around here this whole time, as far as I'm aware. But you went into the hallway, didn't you? You might have missed her slipping by you. Trist went to Wing A when we split up. If she did, he'd have run into her, I think. And Cora couldn't be sure now. Spermia definitely could have had a hand in doing something bad, but if Tristitia didn't run into her... Alright, let's eliminate Superbia from the suspects, then. Uh, that would be great, yeah. They'd been so engrossed in their talk, they hadn't even noticed the bunny girl coming by. She walked down the stairs to join them with a slightly irate tone. Are we gonna vote now? Look, time's ticking, and we've not reached the next set of rooms yet. Three already died, so you've got a 50% chance of coming out of it alive, too. Would it hurt you to be a little more sensitive sometimes? Nobody likes a giant bitch. Something's not quite right. Generally speaking, Superbia is a giant bitch, fine. But she's very forthcoming now. I mean, much more than usual. She's definitely up to something. Superbia shook her head and clicked her tongue, annoyed. Just come here. It's not magic, it's just a few stairs. Looking behind herself, Ancora noticed the rest of the group closing in. She decided to walk up the stairs before they caught up with the trio already in the crossroads. Contrary to what one might think, nothing special happened as the group acknowledged everyone else and stepped forward for the vote. Ancora took her spot in front of the booth with each shotgun designated for her. All the cards were swiped. All helmets were affixed. At that moment, no one could move anymore. This is where it would be best to point out the discrepancy of events. However, I'm kind of at a loss. Nothing really connects or makes sense. Superbia is suspicious. Maybe that's a good spot to start with. But before Ancora could say anything about Superbia, the group was already done their deliberating. 
It had been lightning fast. The only one who wasn't in agreement to vote for Superbia was, to no one's surprise, herself. Superbia was surprisingly not putting up much of a fight, though. She did look fairly annoyed, but it was nothing on the level one would expect of her out of this situation. This is stupid and dumb, and you're all stupid and dumb. <sighs> Those mean the same thing. Either way, she's too dangerous to keep alive. We're all in agreement, right? I guess there's not much more to say about it. <sighs> I don't know. Then what? What are you gonna do? Ava, Cora, Vidi, and I are all gonna vote for Bia. Surely you can tell that voting otherwise is futile. <sighs> I guess you're right. Fine, then. Sorry, Bia, but they're right. Bia didn't say anything. Something's definitely wrong with this. Normally, she would have been out of her mind at the mere mention of killing her. But it's too late to do anything about it? After this uneventful talk, everyone put in their votes for Superbia and as conve convened. What? Hesitating a little, Ancora selected hers too, as her vote wouldn't amount to anything alone. As for the bunny girl, she picked the same one. She voted for herself too? Oh no, this is bad. We just got played, didn't we? God, you're all so fucking dumb. I wasn't saying anything because I couldn't have held my laughter if I did. The screens exposed the votes much like before. What happened was surprising. Even though everyone seemingly voted for Superbia, Ancora was the one with six votes. What? Bia, did you? Ancora stared in bewilderment at the results. It was the final thing she would ever see. She couldn't even finish her sentence before the gunshot echoed out. With this outcome, Ancora had surrendered her right to live, leaving the future in the hands of those who had wronged her. She only had time to hear the first part of the explosion before she was truly ended, her head engulfed in a torrent of heat and destruction. <sighs> I guess that's what one gets for being blind to what's happening. I uh, would have gone differently if I'd known something else, most likely. Or maybe it was some misplaced trust. Whatever the reason, it's too late to ponder it now, but it's still disappointing. You saw pretty much all of eternity before me. But the box remains shut. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is a bad end. Or a dead end, rather, I should say. Ooh, new material unlocked. A tutorial in the flowchart is now available. Select it to learn how to reach other endings. Press Y or click to continue. Okay. Wait, now I get a tutorial on this? Now? After everything? After all we've done? I still have some things here that I haven't seen. There's some stuff here. So I guess, I guess maybe there are a couple more episodes to this before we finish, because I think this is the true route, right? The one down here? Maybe this one goes up here, and then you go like this, and then it comes down here. And then this. It looks like it's a big loop. I don't, I don't know, man. There's one, one I haven't done yet. Uh, um, how long have you been recording? We've been recording for like 45 minutes. Um, okay, let's, let's go back. We got God in our extras. Um, so we should have that. This also looks new. Uh, artisanal bombs! <laughs> Pseudoscience. God is the spiritual deity governing over creation and Catholic religion. Um, the existence of God has heavily been debated and yet is impossible to improve to this day. Though both sides of the argument always provide their fair share of proof or lack thereof. Ultimately, what one believes is their own business, but many also believe God isn't an entity but, ra entity, but rather a force. The point where humanity could be referred to as God, or life itself might be. God is supposedly omni uh, omnipresent and omnipotent. And this is, um... Ava's real name. Help. Sally Ann Test, the cool S. Werewolf Mafia, Tinkerbell Effect, number 39. Okay, so... Uh, credits, CG art... 
Okay, there's a couple of them here that I haven't gotten. Um, so there's this one. And then the one with the helmet on. There's three of these. With the different configurations of people. There's these two, looking up, looking down. Um, only one of those. Only one of those. Two of these. Depending on who has the gun. Uh, one of these, which is the one where they go crazy. Um, there's this one, which we got, where she's like, oh no! There's this one where you get to see their faces, and you're like, oh no, he's a ginger. And you're like, oh no, she's a brunette. <laughs> I don't know. Also, I'm not sure, is he supposed to have, like, piercings? Does Vidi have piercings, like, just in his cheek? Is that what that is? Um, I don't know, very strange. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, we got those. So we still have a couple more. Um, we haven't gotten those yet. Uh, and let's see. We have 88% of these. The lexicon's only 31. And then choices, we have 78. So, I think we need to ma- do we need to max out our choices? You know what I mean? Like, all right, here we go. So we got 280, all right? So now we should have all of the endings as far as I know. We have 277, 278, 279, 280, 281, uh, 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, and then a bunch of stuff where I just like saved in places. Okay. So let's go here and go to the flowchart. Now I'm like, I wonder, I wonder if I can unlock. Where's the flowchart tutorial? You know? Uh, oh, I got a cool S on this one. Um, like, I'm, I'm wondering if. I've definitely made the wrong deductions for these. I didn't hack Avaricia here. Never done that. I haven't shoved. Oh well, okay. I alright. Here's here's the thing. You need to do these before you can determine what these are. Uh what's here? What choice is here? Oh. Hmm. Okay, so we're... Hmm... Alright. So we should have all of the- all of the things. So I'm, we're gonna have to figure out- okay, so basically what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to figure out how to get these- these things over here that I haven't I haven't seen. You know what I mean? And I wonder if some of them maybe are ones that like I just haven't done before. Um I wish this Oh okay when you reach an ending the flowchart will be locked in for that save file. It's changing course fate you won't uh but don't worry. Uh, the game remembers your progress. It remembers all of your choices and endings. On a new file, you'll see an exclamation mark. These are your choices. When you select a segment, this menu will appear. Uh, there are buttons for description, synopsis, choices, up to three per segment. Go, enter, autofill, more on that later in tutorial. Um, each option can only be selected if you picked it in the game to avoid missing info. Picture top to bottom. Available option, selected option, option with missing info. I see. As you select options, to set your trust for the save file. Trust is important, so it determines what path you enter. Once you select an option for all of the choices in a segment, um, the mark changes. As long as there's an exclamation mark, you can change your option. However, uh, when you enter any segment, all of your choices will lock in for this file. Unlock as many options as you can, and try different combinations to new paths. Um, this is the autofill button. It will instantly do all choices up to the selected segment. However, it cannot get you into a new path. It's best used to get back into a path from a previous file. Um, it is handy to get 
to get you back to where you were where you were and then modify specific choices uh, if you can unlock a new path a key will appear these are color coded as follows gray if the segment is inaccessible red if you didn't make the right choice gold if your choices are correct so far okay uh, if you go back and hit the puzzle and see hint number two you get a new additional directive can you solve all the optional puzzles okay so that's that's that um, so what if I want to come here, right? What if I go here and it's like, what do I need to do? I guess I have to hack Avarishia's helmet here. Um, what is? What are the choices here? Make the right deductions, make the wrong deduction. Right, 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 right. right. Um, okay. That's just the same. I was hoping it would be something that would be like, here's the choices you need to make in order to get here, instead of me just having to play with them and see see how I get there. Um, so yeah, because it seems like I should be able to, because whoever this is, I've I've definitely... I guess it's Superbia's, right? Yeah. Superbia. here, but I don't know how to get... Okay, that's the one where they... whatever. Okay, so basically I need to come back to this one, this metaphysics, and I need to hack Avaricia to get this unseen part. So alright, let's go back. Let's go to the file. Uh, this is a new one. I'm gonna trash this. They didn't actually do anything on this file, I just I selected it and then somehow stuff went nuts. So, um, let's do that. Let's see if I can, I can get right? I can't, I can't go there yet. Okay. Uh, how do I get there? Let's see. Um, da 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 Okay, so it looks like this one didn't necessarily matter. Uh, okay, I think I need to get rid of Ira, right? Ira and then... Avaricia? No, because I need to hack Avaricia. Gula, I need to get rid of Gula. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, all right. Uh, Gula. Ira. Ira. Okay, so now we're here. Uh. Okay. I don't know if this one matters. Uh, uh, and no, no, no. All right. Well, so oof, something here needs to change. Uh, why? These are all gonna go to that ending. I don't want that. I want... Uh... Oh, it's because I don't have enough... I don't, I don't have enough cow... Uh, stuff. There we go. That increases my cow. Um... doesn't do anything for my cow. Uh, here? No, I need to do that. Those I need to do. Okay. There's only 66. How do I get... I don't remember how I got down there. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> uh... G...
There we go. Okay. Whew. Okay. Okay. There we go. And then we go here. And we do nothing. Nope. That's not what we should do. Create up. Hmm. Need to unselect. Let me unselect this. Gosh darn it. This is very frustrating. Like I need a I need a way to like un unselect stuff, right? Like <laughs> Alright, so this has to be Ira. This can be Ira. This can be Ira. I need to introduce myself to Lula first. Okay, let me come over here and we take Lux's side. We go there, and then we come here, and we say, present for details. Uh, okay. And then we go here, and we just doesn't matter. Uh, anagram, sure, why not? Um, Ula. Okay. Right one. Okay, so then we come here. Alright, and we can shove Superbia out of the way, I guess? Alright, let's just go here and let's shove Superbia out of the way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh huh, yep, 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 yep. Uh huh. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I think it's soon where I can shove Superbia out of the way. Okay, this is Lux being like blah 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 blah. Trist is, you know. He's got the gun, we gotta be against him. Shove Superbia out of the way. I, I swear I've done that in one of these timelines somewhere, but I don't know. And Cora had to act. This wasn't the real plan. The real plan was to get Tristitia, not Superbia. She moved forward all of a sudden, tackling the rabbit themed girl out of the way of the gun. What? With that tackle, Ancora successfully saved Superbia's life, and yet. The bullet Tristitia shot lodged itself into Luxuria's helmet instead, which caused her to almost immediately crumble to the ground. The smaller girl had been standing behind the rabbit. An explosion came from that body as the helmet disintegrated, taking with it the girl's head and knocking everyone back. It could only be described as morbid. A morbid result of Ancora's choice. Ah! Ancora and Superbia both didn't react to it, not understanding what had just happened. After a second, Ancora was shoved off Superbia. What the hell is happening? Tristitia couldn't understand, taken aback by the strange development. This caused him to drop his guard only a little bit too much. That's when Ancora leapt from suburbia right to his legs. Avarisha had taken a step back, and now she was watching the bear-themed girl knock the male down to his back, causing his helmet to smack on the floor. It seemed that act knocked him out, and Ancora grabbed the revolver as planned. This could have been less messy. At least we've got a death now, and that's a pretty big loss, manner of speaking. While Ancora stood up, her gaze through the helmet's cameras was fixated on the corpse of the sweet small girl. A dead body would haunt her thoughts for the next hours, perhaps even days or weeks. It was a thing, no longer a person. She then looked at the group and shelved the gun in her right boot to use it as a holster. No pockets, huh? Making that outfit might have been a mistake. The next moments were spent in silence as everyone calmed down from the altercation. Then it was already five past the hour. They only had 55 more minutes before the entire complex would explode. I wanted to avoid this! Ancora grimly made her regrets known. She came to sit against the wall, closing her legs to her chest and holding them with her arms. I guess no matter what I do, I always end up with a big mess, huh? Well, it's not really that bad. But now how is the split gonna work with only four participants, one of which is unconscious? What a waste! At least this deals with one issue, namely the required amount of me cards. 
She walked forward to pilfer the one Luxuria had. In the same movement, she also took the strange ornate key the smaller one held. Isn't robbing the dead a little tasteless? I don't think she cares anymore. And besides, we don't have a choice, Miss Proper. If we didn't get these things, we're done. And Cora didn't care. What now? Almost as if to answer that thought, a fifth figure made itself known. Hey look, your boyfriend's back. Vidi? It was indeed Nvidia. He arrived, pausing a moment as he noticed the unconscious Tristitia, and resumed his walk toward the group. It seemed as though he judged no matter what happened. There was no time to waste, and he was right. Yeah, it's me. No questions, though. I don't have the time to answer anything. We don't have the time, that is. Clock's ticking, we've yet to finish these rooms. But where have you been? I said no questions. Alright, fine. I'll give you a few pointers about what I've been up to. I have a me card still, not dead. And the room I was in was separated from the others. It's used to escape this place, probably. Nah, it doesn't work yet. We need all those nine strange keys. How many me cards do we have now? 21, right? Counting this one I found in the strange room too, which is real odd due to the circumstances. And Cora nodded while he went through his thoughtful spiel. On the side, Superbia was definitely holding back from hounding him. If we'd been back five hours ago, Superbia definitely would have flown into a fit of rage. Good for her, she can hold back so easily now. So we really need to solve those rooms too. Something's wrong still. You mean about the count of me cards? Yes, you're correct. We're so far off the count of me cards that we have to collect, yet we only have this section and an hour left. No, less than an hour. I hate to admit it, but Vidi's right. We have no time for this, and I don't want to panic and die. Correct all of that. I think we should hurry and solve the next rooms as soon as possible. We're almost at ten past the hour. What are our teams looking like? With Tristitia still unconsciousness? Unconscious. They had to divide without his input. No longer had the luxury of grouping with multiple people. Even if he was awake, they'd have to send someone alone. The real question was who? I should go alone. Ava and Bia, you're fairly smart. Well, more for Ava than Bia. This cost him some points as Superbia was about to bitch up a storm again, yet he continued with simple disregard for her. So you two should be grouped with someone who's more on level with solving these rooms. I'm confident I can take on one of these rooms alone. Cora didn't feel like that was a good idea. If anything, she's the one who could do this, not him. It'd be a lot easier if I could do it on my own. I already know the answers and all. I refuse. I'm going alone. Are you sure? Because if that's the case, then I'll go with Ava. Are you insane? This fucker wanted to kill me! She pushed the horse-themed boy's, horse boy's body with the tip of her foot. Going with him is like asking for a death sentence. Nah, he won't harm you. I'm pretty sure of that. He doesn't have the revolver used to kill Lux anymore, right? Nvidia pointed at Ancor's boot, having noticed it. How'd you know that? I heard the gun shot when I was coming over. You probably wouldn't have shot Lux, so it had to be him. And seeing how he's unconscious... Also, you got the re revolver in your boot right now. Guess it's not hard to put together. Okay, fine. That makes sense. As an added bonus with this setup, we also get keep Korra alone. No offense, but I bet others might feel uncomfortable if they were in the room with someone who had a revolver ready to fire at a moment's notice. Ah, I see. There's logic behind her going alone this time, then. There's no way Ancora would leave the revolver to anybody, so this was the simplest solution. In the end, it was agreed the teams would go the way NVIDIA suggested. Timers finally reached the 10 minute mark past the hour. 50 minutes remained. What about this guy? Am I supposed to pull his lard ass over on my own? Uh, uh, uh. I am not a lard ass. The boy came awake, slowly pulling himself up. Immediately, everyone stood on their guard. No one made any movement to help him. Don't worry. I can see when I'm outmatched. I'm not going to be mediating for peace anymore. I understand you've all been planning this against me for a while now. Uh, that's not... Shut it. Save it for later. Mia, I will trust you for this room, but after that, we need to have a long talk. <sighs> Spurbia looked more than a little annoyed. But upon closer inspection, she seemed more awkward than annoyed. It's like she didn't know what to say or do. A first for her. Let's go then, Trust. 
Two of them walked to the corner, then vanished to take the room furthest away. Avaricia and Nvidia looked at each other, and then both rooms accessible close by. Which one do you want? Does it even matter? Apparently it didn't matter. The two of them waved goodbye to Ancora and vanished inside one of the slightly further away, which left Ancora the closest one. After casting another glance inside the doorway where Lux's body was visible, Ancora went toward the other room. Alone for once. That's new. These things will be infinitely simpler now. Won't need to hide. Ancora stepped into the room. She didn't wait for the talk with me, already looking around. The room was a little strange. It had a ceiling with a few spots of light, little reminiscent of a square. For some reason, she thought of stars, too. Okay, so we've we've already done this one. This isn't one where she prepares. So she's like, ah, somebody made a room that I didn't set up for myself. But we've already done this one, so it's not going to be that bad. You know, that one wasn't actually as hard as the, like, one that they added stuff to. <laughs> uh, Alright. Uh, right, so these are the anagrams. The key have AP. What are the other ones? I can't remember. Uh, we're considering until I know more of them. Okay, we found the shotgun. Take that with us. Uh... All right, so, oh, geez, I, <laughs> I'm being told by um, OBS to, to chill out a little bit, so maybe we will we will save and come back to this next time. Um, thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, I will see you guys again um, next week. I might record a bonus episode this week since I'm trying to finish up Earth Me Code by the end of the month. Um, maybe over the weekend or something like that. We'll see. Also, uh, coming up um, next weekend, Nate and I are going to go back to streaming. Uh, and that's going to be really fun. There's a new game uh, that is coming out that we're going to play and we're going to do it with a kind of an interesting twist. So I hope you guys are excited for that. So all right, everybody, I'll see you again soon and take it easy. Bye.